know it's been a little bit since my last fan mail. It started to pile up a little bit, so uh, let's do this. And it might take a little while. First off, we got a package from Tyson Turner. What do we have here? Oh, we have Thor Tales of Asgard, the animated Thor film. I have not seen this one yet, so I can't really comment on it, but I always try to slowly make my way through all of the um, other comic book movies that are out there. There's a tons of DC ones. I've seen a lot more of those ones. I'm trying to get more into the um, ones for Marvel. For example, back in May, I watched the Doctor Strange animated movie they came out with, but I haven't seen this one yet, so uh, hopefully I can check that one out. Thank you, Tyson. Then we have a package from Michael. Ooh, quite a few movies in here. Alrighty, what do we have here? Alrighty. First up, Edward Scissorhand, one of the uh, iconic Tim Burton films. I, I saw this one actually in the theater when it first came out, but um, I'm not sure if I've even re-seen it since then. So I saw it, you know, I was an, an original adopter. I was there day number one. I'm not sure if I've rewatched it since then. Next one, Dark Shadows. I definitely haven't seen this one. Uh, when it came out, it got kind of mixed reviews. Uh, trailers looked a little bit silly for me, so I, I kind of missed this one. Um, so I haven't seen that one, so I can't really comment on it. Likewise, uh, Sweeney Todd missed this one as well. Kind of came out right around when I first got married, so we're just really busy with life. Finishing college, switching states, a bunch of stuff like that, so I haven't seen that one. Here's an interesting one. Christmas Vacation 2. Now, I've seen the, the original Christmas Vacation roughly one million times. I've never seen the spinoff about Uncle Eddie. So uh, now I guess this Christmas I can. And final one in here, Red Eye. And this is a movie my wife and I watched for the first time just a couple years back, uh, it wasn't wasn't too long ago that we actually watched this one. I don't, I don't even remember wh why it came up, but uh, yeah, we actually watched that one. It was a, a nice little, kind of pleasant little surprise of a movie that we hadn't seen, hadn't heard too much about. Checked it out, it was like, oh, pretty cool little flick. So thank you much for those, Michael. Next up, we got a package from Vincent. Ooh, we got books. Okie dokie. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay, so... Okay, there doesn't appear to be a note, but he sent me a book that I believe, based off the name on the, the writings, is a book that he wrote, which is very, very cool. Uh, so I, I don't know anything about it, but um, that's just really cool that he wrote a book and he sent it to me, so um, I'll look into that and check it out a little bit. Um, don't know what it what it's about. Then he also sent me a movie Harakiri, Harakiri, Death of a Samurai from uh, Takashi Miike, who is a director. I've seen some of his movies. I haven't seen a ton of them. It's been a little bit since I watched one, but um, he's been making films for a while, and so he's one of those directors that I, I checked out uh, several of his movies um, about 20 years back. Uh, but I have not seen this one, so that could be very cool. And then he also included me here. Uh, Star Wars The Skywalker Saga for the Switch, which I'm sure will be a massive hit with my kids because uh, they love the Lego games, they love to play games on their Switch and have things that they can play in the car. So, um, Star Wars Lego Switch game, all home run. So that's that's very cool that you sent that my way. And, uh, that'll make for some fun family nights as well. We uh, pull out four controllers and do that for some of our family nights. So, thank you much for that, Vincent. That's very cool. Then we have one from Daniel Skinner, prolific fan mailer. And we have The Rookie, the Dennis Quaid film. I don't believe I have seen this one. Um, so can't comment on it. Uh, I, I am aware of its, existent, but, uh, its existence, but I don't believe I've seen it. So I have nothing to say about it. So could be pretty cool, don't know. Then we have a box of HelloFresh that's been in my room for a while, so probably not so fresh anymore. This one is, uh, once again, from Michael, who sent a package earlier. Oh! Very cool. Oh, nice. Very cool. So it's the jumbo-sized Funko Pop of the Batmobile from the Batman. So you gotta, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, 
but you got Batman's head on top of the Batmobile, all in Fun Funko style. Very cool, excellent. Then we have a few more movies in there. What do we have here? First up is Shutter Island, a movie I still haven't seen. And uh, people ask me about it all the time. What do you think about Shutter Island? I've never seen it before. And um, I, I was going to do a Scorsese ranking in at the end of this year when his new film came out, but they pushed it back to next year. So that one got pushed back. And I think I'm swapping it, doing a Spielberg ranking instead. Or actually, I'm working to do a Spielberg ranking if I can get them watched. That will happen. But so as for our Shutter Island, uh, it looks like it'll be early next year. I'll finally watch this movie so I can chime in on all the conversations people keep trying to have with me about that movie. Next up, we've got Moonfall, the latest Roland Emmerich film. Oh, we got, I guess the other one in here is, is also Roland Emmerich. 2012, the master of blowing up the earth. So 2012 blows up the earth with Mayan prophecies. Moonfall blows up the earth with the moon and I get a kick out of all his movies, whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether they're stupid, all they're all those things. But he's really good at blowing up the earth and getting movie stars to star in his movies where he blows up the earth. So th thank you, Michael, for that. And my wife hasn't watched Moonfall yet, so maybe that's one we'll check out in the near future. Okay, got another package from The Daniel Skinner. Ooh, we got a set of movies in here. What do we have up? Oh, and, oh, cool. First up, we have Akira in 4K, the classic anime, and I, I this is the first anime I ever saw, but I watched it out of order. So I started watching it, I, I think it was like two-thirds of the way through, and there's like a guy running in fears, teddy bears are chasing him, and whenever he punches the teddy bears, milk pours out of them, and then a gigantic amoeba eats a city. That's where I started, like I didn't know what was going on, I was like, what on earth am I watching? And then I started from the beginning and it made a little bit more sense, not a ton more sense. So, um, but yeah, one of the classic, classic animes that uh, I probably should need to give another watch to, and now I can. Gattaca, this is a fun one. This is a, I don't know, fun one. Fun's not the right word to describe it. Gattaca, a movie I've seen a number of times over the years. We got that in the 4K. Just kind of nice, like simple, kind of sci fi concept about, you know, a world that's kind of a little bit more programmed. Who's the director on that one? Uh, yeah, Andrew Nichol, who does a, does a number of those kind of like high concept, uh, non-action sci-fi films, more kind of thrillers, more thought pieces that are just all kind of intriguing. So um, I believe I saw that one in the theaters when it first came out. Then we have one that I kind of uh, watched on TV all the time growing up and nice cool collector's edition for Explorers. Uh, one of those kind of, um, mid 80s sci-fi uh picks um that uh i don't know i don't even know how to describe them that amblin I don't, I don't, is it isn't it amblin is it Am i was gonna say it's amblin but i was like i don't think it's amblin but it has that same vibe as all the amblin ones the uh steven spielberg ones of just kind of these kids being kids and sci-fi stuff kind of get, joining in on the adventure so it's ethan hawk river phoenix like a bunch of familiar faces and wasn't as big of a hit but it was on television all the time, so I saw it one million times on television back in the day. Then we have October Sky, a movie that I have not seen and don't know enough about to be able to say anything interesting. Hmm. It appears it's from someone named Daryl and just kind of some various different art and posters and stuff. So, whoa! Alarm went off. I have a live stream in 10 minutes. I can't miss. Uh, but Daryl, thank you so much um, for for the drawings and the posters. Um, very much appreciated. And I hope I didn't miss a note in there. I didn't seem to find a note, but hope I didn't miss one. We have another package from the Daniel Skinner. All right. First up, we have Grease, the classic musical that. Uh, uh, you know, of course, I've seen Grease a number of times. One of the films that skyrocketed John Travolta the A-list, and then sadly, Olivia Newton-John passed away very recently. So um, I'm not sure the timing of when it was sent. If you just happened to send me Grease right before she passed, or if you sent it because you saw that she did pass. But um, obviously, um, you know, it's very sad any time someone that uh, passes away that has you know impacted you know so many people. And we have Bleed for us, the Miles Teller boxing film. I have not seen this one, so, uh, and I haven't heard too much about it, so I don't don't even know what to expect other than boxing drama. 
We have Old School, the Todd Phillips comedy classic. Haven't watched this one in a while, but I have seen it several times uh, back in the day. So um, yeah, need to give that one another, another watch. And then the last one in here is the awesome new premium edition of True Romance, the Tony Scott film from a Quentin Tarantino script. And I, I've seen the movie several times, but it's been a little while. And I've actually been meaning to do a video on the other Quentin Tarantino films, because uh, early on, he wrote all these scripts, puts out Revs of War Dogs, Pulp Fiction becomes this super hot commodity. But he had these scripts that he'd written that kind of got picked up by other people that he wasn't going to direct. And so there's there's enough of those that I could actually do something with that, but I haven't yet. And so one of those, one of the more famous of those is, of course, True Romance, since Tony Scott, of course, directed it. And it has a very Quentin Tarantino vibe to everything about it. So I really need to rewatch that one because it's been so long. All right, then we got a package from Marcus Hudgens. Thank you so much. Ooh, we got nice, nice, nice. Okay. Okay, first off, we got three Funkos. Awesome. We got uh, Paul Rudd from Ghostbusters Afterlife. Excellent. Then we have Captain Carter from What If, as well as Captain, uh, not Captain, uh, as well as uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Excellent, excellent. And then we have Defender Strange from Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Excellent, excellent. Very cool. Ah. And we've got, okay. and we've got, oh, this is fun. We got stickers for the kids as well as popcorn little containers, which is nice because we always, as a family, make popcorn whenever we watch movies and we make one big tub and we're like passing it around. This will actually make that much easier to just give everyone their own little popcorn container. And then the kids, of course, love uh, stickers. Oh, there is a note in here. Oh, just a nice little note. Uh, passing some stuff along. Um, thank you so much, Marcus. And finally, we've got a few movies in here. First up, The Singing Detective. Uh, I, I'm aware of the movie's existence, but I have not seen it. And it is Robert Downey Jr. I believe Mel Gibson has a part in it. And I believe it's about a singing detective hence the title but I don't I know very little about it I haven't heard too much about it so now I'm curious then we have um, oh Hitchcock the movie about Alfred Hitchcock starring uh, Anthony Hopkins another one I haven't seen yet and I don't actually know much of anything about Hitchcock's life so one that should be interesting to check out to like even just learn more about kind of this classic uh, storytelling then we have welcome to the punch uh, I haven't I think I've even heard of this one yeah, this is one I'm not familiar with at all. So that one's a, a totally, I mean, it's got James McAvoy, Mark Strong, so familiar faces, Ridley Scott produced it. I don't know anything about that one, huh? Uh, Brigsby Bear, I haven't seen it, but I remember when it came out, a bunch of people were really excited about it. It was just kind of, some, sometimes would, you know, even though I watch movies for a living, watch over a hundred new movies every single year, you just kind of miss some stuff. And this was one of them. And along those same exact lines, uh, Out of the Furnace is one that I was like, oh, maybe should I can check that out? Will I make it? And then I didn't end up seeing it. So these are all, these will all be first time watches for me. I haven't seen any of these ones. So uh, very, very cool. Excellent. Thank you so much for popcorn tins, Funkos, and then movies that uh, I haven't seen will kind of expose me to something new. Final package on here. One final one from the Daniel Skinner. First up, Cast Away, the Robert Zemeckis, Tom Hanks, uh, big massive hit. I, I loved this film when it first came out. It's not one that you rewatch all the time because it's it's not like a swift, quick moving movie, but I think it's just a real effective film. Donnie Brasco, haven't seen this one. Um, remember when it came out? I had Entertainment Weekly. We got the magazine weekly. And remember reading articles about it, but I've actually never seen Donnie Brasco, one of those pre-Pirates Johnny Depp films kind of established him as this great actor, but he wasn't quite to the mainstream, that big draw that uh, Pirates turned him into. Last of the Mohicans, uh, I've seen this movie a few times, but it's been like over 20 years, and it's kind of one of those classic beloved films that uh, I really need to, to, to see, see again. Breakfast Club, 80s classic. This one I actually watched for the first time within the last five years. For whatever reason, John Hughes movies just weren't one of the ones that I watched growing up, other than like Home Alone and uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, but a lot of the you know, classic high school ones, I didn't, 
didn't watch them. I didn't see them back. I knew of them. I just, there wasn't a reason. Just for whatever reason, I didn't see them. So I'm kind of playing catch up on some of those. Then we have Roadhouse, the Patrick Swayze classic action film. Another one that I have seen, but it has been a while. It wasn't one of my go-to films back in the day. Like I just kind of watched it at some point in time. And it's like, oh, that was cool enough. Um, but it didn't make a big enough impact that I watched it multiple other times. Then we have Beetle Geese or Beetlejuice, the Michael Keaton, Tim Burton classic that, um, actually spawned a cartoon that I wa I watched the cartoon of Beetlejuice more than I actually watched the movie for whatever reason because it was I guess it was the right age when it came out to watch the Beetlejuice cartoon but I've seen the movie a number of times it's just it's been a while and we have Blow a movie I actually saw in the theater when it came out but I haven't seen it since it came out all I really remember is that it's about lots and lots of cocaine final movie of the day Jumanji welcome to the jungle in 4k Jumanji is Huge, huge, huge in my house. We watch the Jumanji movies all the time. Old ones, new ones, Zathura, the kind of this fake spin-off of sorts. Uh, we watch all of them pretty regularly, so um, these are big, gigantic hits. In fact, sometimes we watch Jumanji movies right on uh, New Year's Eve, and we try and time it so that it, they scream Jumanji right as the year 2020 ends in hopes that 2021 will be better. It wasn't that much better. It didn't work, though we tried. Anyway, there you have it. That was a month's worth of fan mail playing catch up all at once. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for sending in fan mail. It really does mean the world to me that you care enough to, to send me things like that. Um, uh, whether it's letters, notes, Funkos, movies, that you care means the world to me. Thank you so much and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye bye. <laughs>